Reamy fans and welcome to another episode of Who Are We Gonna Ream This Week? In today's episode, representing that famous landlocked country of neutrality where they eat Toblerones for breakfast, dinner and second dinner, we have this, this BMC wank machine. And it was sent to me by a viewer who said he'd had some problems with it creaking. Now, he didn't buy the bike new, so he says, um, it was second hand. So it's arrived here in a somewhat troubled state. So we will, we will take it apart to see if it really does mean BMC bicycle may crack. So what have we got? Well, we've got those handlebars, which I think are deader, a deader stem, which probably doesn't come with it. Quite a few headset spaces and then the rest of the bike. So the BMC, badly made cycle, or bicycle made, made crap, or badly made carbon, as Lucia Technic likes to say, is hand designed and fettled in Switzerland, but made somewhere else. It doesn't actually say where it's made on the bike. Now, <laughs> compared to the Skylon, this is like a piece of shit. Absolute fucking wank. Right, this is garbage, absolute garbage. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing here. It's got disc brakes at the front and also disc brakes at the back. It'd be unusual if they were separate. This is a Robert Axel project. So if anyone knows what that's all about, then do let me know. The forks are not fully integrated in terms of the handlebar routing of the cables and things. They do come out externally and then through and then out here again to get to the handlebars. The frame is actually quite chunky tubing. Um, so that, that is really quite thick. That's a good old girth. You know, that's like two Toblerones worth. Then up there, it's again, very boxy tubing. So if anyone says this is aerodynamic, it's Fucking bullshit, right? Then we go over here to this, which is the scalloped seat tube, which we kind of like on the show. And then the dropped seat stays, which are kind of like a common thing these days. I'm guessing these are for mud guards or fender mounts or whatever you guys like to call it, or in Switzerdeutsch, scheiße. <laughs> then at the back, this is quite interesting. So the section round here is quite thick and then it sort of decays towards nothing. Now this bike has got external routing of the uh, cables um, in the sense that it's, it's geared. Um, and also from there, it's not internally routed. So gear mech here. This is a bag of shit. Now I'll show you some pictures of the insides of the front mech hanger, but it's pretty much scandalous. And it's fairly likely that if you're going to get a break, you're going to get one round there because it is an absolute bag of wank. What we've got here is the BB86 bottom bracket. And you can see there the rear uh, brake disc hose that goes under. And it's qu under quite some tension, that. Um, it comes underneath the bottom bracket. And uh, the chap also sent me the bottom bracket that he tried, which is a wheels bottom bracket. And on there, there's some witness marks which suggest that has been rubbing. Now, the bottom bracket shell itself is oval and based on that, it's basically not aligned. It's also slightly undersized. This is the non drive side, and this is that line that was under a bit of tension. Apologies if it's not quite in focus. There's a rub mark on the top of it. Now, before I started this, and I'll show you the video of it later, the line was actually fixed solid by some epoxy that looks like it's in the back and I'm not sure that's supposed to be there in fact I don't think it is. Now the other thing you can see is the shells are absolute shambles. It's rough, um, it's got bits sticking out so that all needs to be tidied up. There's another good advert for precision Swiss engineering. Nice! Oh, gotta look around there. Flipping egg. Oh. Right, it is that time of the show again. It is time for PowerPoint, and I have outdone myself today. Today's PowerPoint is called Swiss Precision Wanketeering Gets DPR'd by a wig wearing knobhead from Marseille. 
aka Manchester. Now, if you are wondering how that is pronounced, that is pronounced DBR and not DBeard. DBR is an acronym for dry butt reamed, no less. By Hambini, aged five. Now, if you're wondering why I'm slightly stressed with this one, it is because the Swiss, or not specifically the Swiss as a whole, no, fuck that, the Swiss, love to market themselves as precision engineers. And I don't think that should suffice because just this one example is an utter fucking bag of shit. Here is what I'm on about, right? So here is the bike that is on my carpet. I've labeled it. There's the seat stay, there's the seat tube, and there's the chain stay. So we're looking at the rare triangle. So if we look at that, here's my bike. It's this bit that we're looking at. Um, and the bit that's really of concern is the front mech hanger. So this is a close up of the front mech hanger. And if you zoom in and then do a bit of fudging with the contrast, you end up with this. Now, this is a precision Swiss front mech hanger designed by genius. Check out those four countersunk screws and the fit around them. I mean, look at the fit around that and look at the fit around that. Utter fucking wank. And the fit round that, and the fit round that. Absolute garbage. Now, this is the kind of thing that when I said, if you're gonna buy a bike, basically buy a Skylon or buy what's coming up soon, those two machines are very, very good. And that's because you don't end up with some bollocks engineering like this. So this is the front mech hanger from the outside. This is the front mech hanger from the inside. So you can see this, which is a riv nut or the insert that comes through and another insert that comes through. If you zoom in, they are touching. They are absolutely touching there and there. So if I go back, this is at an angle, you see, so it's at the very corner and they are touching. What kind of a fucking grade A imbecile does that? Absolute shocker. It's not even engineering, it's common sense. What you have to do is you've either got to offset them enough or make them smaller. So make them like they go to that size. This is why those four countersunk uh, screws do not fit. And you've created a stress razor in that bit there let me just delete the uh, ink. The stress razor in there, because they are close to each other, you screw from that side, you screw from that side, what they try and do is force each other apart and you're gonna get a crack. Now I do quite a lot of insurance claims. Um, and one of the things you look at is failure by design or failure by manufacture. This would be a prime example of failure by design because they are, well, they look to be the original parts. And if you get a crack in that region, and let's say it causes a catastrophic failure, BMC will be all over the coals with that. I don't think they have any defense. Or if they do have a defense, because I'll be honest, I've seen some, some pathetic ones in the past. Most of the time, the bike companies um, when they get the threat of something like this, they settle because they don't really have a leg to stand on and you get something called disclosure where you have to um, submit all your documents and things and I probably think they wouldn't want to do that. But this is it. Now the likelihood of it failing in that area is probably slim because the load you've got on it is really the front mech. But if you were to take a sudden impact and it failed through there, then it's a different kind of kettle of fish. But that's just really what I'm saying. It's, it's the difference between the, the Skylon, which doesn't have any of this wanketeering crap, it's just well engineered, well put together, and this, these little subtle little things that to the outside individual, they're not aware of, but it's garbage. This is the bottom bracket area, and you can see it's all scabby as fuck. <laughs> it's just scabby as fuck. Um, and then this bit here, and there's also the bit there which is underneath the uh, the polystyrene packaging. This is the brake hose that's coming through. 
and you see this, which is a blob of epoxy or whatever it is, and this is like an inner sleeve. So that was glued, um, and I'll show you the results of that later. The insides of this bike aren't great. Now, some people, when I put my um, internal shots on, they're not very good at telling the difference between what is tenting and what isn't, um, or, you know, excess resin. This here is tenting. And that's because in the middle of the layer, it's wrinkled. If it's on the edge, you tend to get a very straight line um, and then the resin just kicks up. Here, you've got, you've got lines in multiple angles. So there's one there, there's one there. Um, and then here is a lot more noticeable. This white stuff here isn't uh, spunk, it's um, glue, basically. And this is... Either the, I think that's the hose, could be the gear cable, but that's through one of the stays. Um, now, BMC are um, what I would class as particularly good engineers. They shift loads of bikes. This is um, a, it's a frame and a handlebar set that one of my viewers sent to me. Uh, and this is, I think he said it was a team machine or a road machine, I can't remember which. Um, but you can see the, <laughs> The, this is like a perfect example of fatigue failure from just crap design. I mean, it's failed straight through um, the edge of the clamp. So it may have been over tightened, and I'm sure that they would use that as an excuse. But yeah, I mean, for it to fail there, Christ. I mean, imagine if that happened while you were going down a hill. God. Um, and here's a, a better shot of it. This is odd. Well, I wouldn't say it's odd. It's just the way that the carbon layers are, are layered up. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought that may have been carbon and aluminium put together. Don't know. Um, unless you've got it really in your hand, you can't see. But you see, that's a perfect line through there, through that joint. Um, I suspect that is actually a joint. So it's the carbon behind it. And it has failed perfectly <laughs> failed perfectly this is the bottom bracket from the bike so i've called it a swiss turd um that's me being kind this is a radial distance so you've got 41 millimeters divided by two uh gives you 20.5 so that's your limit value there and it will be 40.95 divided by two which is 20.25 uh, not sure. Um, I mean, it was undersized. I think that's 20.8. I can't remember. Right, th anyway, what you can see is, first of all, if you check out the blue, um, it's, it's actually oval. It's maybe not so clear um, on this chart, but um, the center line of the blue is probably about here, and I've centered it on the orange, which is there. Um, the actual... I guess the crux of it is, I mean, it's off. Um, how you draw it is, is up to you, um, but it's off and it's undersized is what I'm really trying to say. Uh, I mean, that's 24.4 or two. It's just undersized. And that's why the chap had problems with it. Um, Krieg, now Krieg is a very misunderstood thing. So. Creaking is movement that is in a frequency that you can hear. Now, typically, most people can hear somewhere between 20 and 20 kilohertz. If it's outside that range, um, you probably need to be a dog or you need a hearing aid. Um, and it's almost always caused by movement. And it, it tends to be a buildup of tension and then the sudden release. Yeah, so you put your foot on the pedal and then you build up a load of force, torque, release it, and at the point of release is when it clicks. Or you, in, you put, apply the load and you exceed a limit value and then it suddenly clicks. It's almost always caused by some sort of movement. Now there's two solutions really to creaking. Now the, the best one is to stop the movement. So a firm fix. So if you've got a bottom bracket that's moving, the best thing to do is to stop it moving because if you've got movement then it's actually a power loss 
Another method of doing it is to fully allow movement, and that's to grease and lubricate it. Now, back in the days when GCN used to just put out crap, well, they still do, don't they? I mean, they said that the Lotus 109 with its very aerodynamic position was slower than a um, modern day aero bike, something that I find very difficult to believe. But there you go, I'm just a cynic, five years old. Um, they used to recommend taking the bottom bracket out and then greasing it to hell and then putting it back in. What happens there is it's just going to move more, but you won't be able to hear it. So that's that's how that works. In the case of this bike, there's two things, two discrete things. So fix the bottom bracket and then fix the stuck cable. Now I just want to be clear, when the chap sent the bike in, he was expecting to get a new bottom bracket. After I looked at it and went through it all, I think the best course of action was, was to do these things. So fix a stuck cable or hydraulic line and then sort out the alignment and then uh, give that back to him. Um, and that's, you know, that's what, what. So this is before. Spray some Teflon on it and now. I think that's a fix. <laughs> That's a lot better. No creaking now. So this has been machined now. So the inside of there is 40.95 and the outside is 41. So that's gone in. So we know it's halfway in between. Inside, I don't know if you can just about see, but the very corner, there you go. They're the little bits that were outside of the range. So I couldn't quite get them, um, but you kind of got to draw the line somewhere. And that's where we are. This is the drive side of the bike. This has also been machined and I've gone again, I've got the, the light here and the test gauge, 41 there, 40.95, you know the drill. So in here, that's a result. So just because it was undersized, we fixed that. That's a lot, lot better. And that brings us to the end of this video. Now, I'm pleased to report that the uh, individual whose bike it was, he went and fitted a new bottom bracket and he hasn't had any creaking since. So the two issues, which were the bottom bracket roundness alignment being undersized and also the um, cable or line that was epoxied in seemed to have remedied it and he didn't need a new bottom bracket. Now, if you did enjoy this video, remember to smash that like button. And if you didn't, go screw yourself. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser.